Model Making Guru is sponsored by eModels.co.uk, your one-stop shop for all your model making needs. eModels.co.uk, make something awesome. Holy crap, mystery package time. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Yeah, bit of a bit of a part there. Look at the size of this, it's just huge. <sighs> what could be in this enormous box that's just on it from Hobby Link Japan? Shall we find out? Yeah, let's find out. I have the slightly blunt knife of not really stabbing me, but opening boxes. Let's give it a go. <sighs> Yeah, I had to clear the workbench for this. I had to clear the workbench, and when I cleared the workbench, I realised I had to dust the workbench. See, the things I do for you people, I don't know. Let's get this box open. I know what's inside, so it's not a mystery package for me. Let's see if there's any letters in there. <gasps> you know what's in here. Oh, oh. There's a hold out. Yeah. Oh, there's another one. Meh. I won't do that to all of them because it will take me approximately forever. <sighs> Let's get this puppy open somehow. <sighs> wow. I'm going to have to move the box out of the way so I can take the thing that's inside out. So give me a second. I'll, I'll leave the camera going. I've got to find somewhere to put this. I've also got to try and get it out of the box. Ugh. Oh, oh my life! Are you ready? <sighs> Unicorn Gundam destroy mode mega size. Mega, mega size. size. Yes, I have ordered the mega size Unicorn Gundam. What a beast! If you watch my build of the mega sized RX seventy eight two. That was 34 centimetres high. That was big. I struggled filming that one. This is 45.2 centimetres tall. It's a 148 scale Gumpler. See, I haven't forgotten Gumpler. I've not abandoned you. It's just I can't do all Gumpler all the time. So, I don't even know if I can go around the box on this because it's just too big. Um, but being mega size, of course, it's designed for easy build, so it's basically dead simple. It's simpler than an HG, basically. It's more just the size. Uh, lots of information here uh, in English and in Japanese, which is nice, showing how you can snap things together. It's got the um, sprue snap, I don't know what they call it, like the sprue snapping together thing, where you get two sprues of parts and you can put the two sprues together and then pop the parts out. I like that. Now, yeah. They say you can build it without nippers. However, you can't. Watching Zach over at Zach Aurelius do his, he kind of came to the same conclusion. You can't. There's some pieces that you need to use nippers. So, not the end of the world, but if you got this for a little kid hoping they could just push all the parts out, you can. It just won't look brilliant. What's around the box? Anything we need to talk about? Oh. God, this is heavy. So again, I don't know how much of this is coming out on camera, but it shows uh, just nice shots of the Unicorn Gundam itself. Gives an example here, if it comes out of camera, of the ratcheted polycap system. If it's not got the glare on it. Uh, the polycaps have little sort of teeth inside and it helps the arms grip. It's not the best, apparently, but it works. Gives them a bit better grip than, than just having plastic bolts or regular polycaps. So, there's nothing else to show off on the box. Not that I actually can, because it's too damn big. <sighs> so what I'll see if I can do, I'll see if I can get the camera above for a better shot and we'll do a sort of an unboxing and we'll make this the first video in a video build. Now I don't know when I'm going to get around to doing this, obviously there's other stuff I need to do first, but this will get done, it'll be properly painted and everything. So let me see if I can move the camera and we'll see if we can give you a top shot. Okay, so it's going to be easy for me to film it on the desk here rather than anywhere else. So let's go through what we get. First up, we get two of these sprues. You get two of them. As you can see here, we have various parts uh, looking like shoulder parts. These are ankle parts. I'm not sure what they go on. 
Uh, if you've made the master grade or real grade or high grade unicorn, that's the bit that goes in the front of the foot, you'll recognize this bit. This is the bit that goes on the back of the leg and there's a thruster underneath. I think just by looking at that, you get an idea of the size of this thing. Now it's white plastic. I've got to say, it's not two part white plastic. It's not like multi shades of white like you get in some kits. It's very straightforward, but the detail on it is really nice. I don't know if it comes out on camera because the white balance tends to overexpose things, but there's lots of lovely little panel lines and tick marks and recesses and little tick marks there and little circle things. And oh, that's really nice. I'm gonna have fun panel lining this and just getting some getting some dirt and grime in there. It's gonna be weathered, but not massively. So we get two of these sprues to start with. We also get two of these sprues. Look, actually no, you get one of these sprues, I should say, get it right. Look at the size of that. This is the Beam Magnum. It's, only way to describe it is a big chicken. You can see here you've got the, the trigger finger hand. You get two sets of hand, a trigger finger hand and a, a a clenched, clenched hand. Yeah, one of the things is missing, but it's in the box. It just came off the sprue. These are only very lightly attached with tiny gates for some of the parts, which is why Bandai say you can put these together without using nippers. Some of the parts have very tiny sprues, so you may find one or two parts come off in the box, but it's not the end of the world. It's absolutely fine. Uh, but I'm gonna be using nippers and, as normal, like I say, so I can sand off any marks. The beam rifle itself is a single, simple two-part stick together job, so we'll be sealing the seam line on that. It's massive. Uh, you don't get the magazine separately, unfortunately, so I'll have to mask that off and paint it blue. But yeah, it's looking... Oh, that's going to be big. What's next? Next up is this sprue, which gives you the closed grippy hands, the hrrr hands, uh, some interior parts, and you get the crotch, the hip joint piece, which as you can see is pretty big. Now the hips on the unicorn aren't that big. It's the legs that are really long that make it such a big kit. So yeah, here we can see the gray part in the middle of the torso, as you can see on camera. It's the bit that the torso comes out of, size of it. I mean, on the master grade, it's like that big. It's gonna be big, it's gonna be big. You can see here the hands, there's lovely detail on the hands, really nice crisp edges and lines. It's gonna take really well to panel lining. I might do, I don't know whether to do a gray interior on this or my kind of typical shiny metallic interior. One downside is the thumbs are hollow. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. I can live with it. It's fine. It doesn't really, I could fill them in or I could leave them. It's not the end of the world. Uh, although there is another part of the thumb there. So that probably fills that in. So I'll just shut up now because I've just answered my own question. Hooray. What's next? Next, we have a psycho frame runner. Look at that. That is gorgeous. It's a beautiful, I mean, I'm looking at it from this angle. You might not see it on camera, but I'm looking at it here. It's like a dark, with the green underneath. It's like a dark purple color, but all the edges are bright orangey red. It's amazing. That's awesome. Now, obviously when I put this on the kit, I'm not lighting it, but the, you probably could. When I put this on the kit, I'm not gonna paint these or color these anyway. I'm gonna leave them as they are. Now I do know that in, some of them look, come out looking different colors because some are just on top of white plastic, some are over hollow areas, but oh, that is gorgeous. I don't know if it'll, if it really come out the sort of, it looks like it's got a very 1980s digital art kind of feel to it. The, the greeny purple color because of the matte and then the bright pinky red lines, especially on these parts. It's awesome. It's awesome. Uh, and it's weirdly soft and flexible as well. It's not super flat. It's not like a poly cap thing, but it's fluffed and sexable. Yeah, that was the wrong way around. Um, so I'm going to enjoy that. Whether I end up painting, say, silver on the inside of them, so they all look the same colour, or something, I don't know yet. I might do, I might not. You see here the uh, the blades for the shield. Oh, these are the knee parts. They're for the ankles, I think. Uh, I think that's for the shield. Not sure where those go. We'll figure it out. There's, there's, there's more of these anyway. That is a lovely, lovely colour. What's next? Next up, we have a blue runner. This is the backpack. Look at the size. It's huge. And not just that, that's the front half of the foot. The heel goes here. That's, that's the heel there. Look at the size of that. This is gonna be awesome and also massive. Yeah, this is gonna be fantastic. Now obviously this is a new release on all the sprues, well all but one of the sprues, it's got 2017 on it. Uh, it says, what does it say? I need my other glasses. It says Mega Size Model Gun a Unicorn Gundam D 
M D M destroy mode. So there you go. So they're all new, all new sprues apart from two that I can see. Uh, but yeah, you just get this feel. Now it's typical blue Bandai plastic, so it's got all the swirly, swirly marks in it where the plastic's gone in the mould. If you're not painting it, it might disappear when you matte varnish. I'm going to be painting this, obviously, but I'm looking forward to that. Uh, thankfully, the actual tree points where the, the nubs where it joins to the sprue are really small so I shouldn't have too many issues with I mean I'm painting it so it doesn't matter but if you weren't painting it when you use this blue plastic from Bandai kits it's really hard to denub without getting white stress marks where you take the nubs off so I don't have that problem because I'm painting it but if you're not painting it they'll actually be really small so you might get away with it give it a sand and a polish and it should be fine what's next next up is two of these Got two here yeah now you really are starting to get a feel for it yes it was a big gun yes it was a big the other bits that's the lower half of the leg the foot goes I think here and the upper leg goes here now you're starting to get a feel for this how big this is it's uh, yeah it's impressive we've got the bit where the hand comes out here that's the like the collar of the arm that's I think part of the shoulder that's the bit on the side of the arm that goes here more arm parts the only thing, one of the things I don't like about this kit, there's a couple of things that I'm like, really? Um, the beam sabers are in halves, so you've got two there, and you've got one there, and one there. Yeah, I would have preferred to have a single piece beam saber, but, uh, you know, you can't have everything. You can't have everything. But yes, so you can see they're hollow, so you'll have seam lines on the beam saber. Uh, looking at the rest of the kit, from what I've seen of other people building it, a lot of the seam lines are actually hidden in, in panelling, like around the leg and stuff, so... You're probably not going to have too many issues with seam lines. We'll find out when we do the arms and things where they need to fiddle around. These are the back of the hand plates. So again, you get a feel for the size of these things. Mm, I'm really liking this white plastic though. White plastic from Bandai is, when you're making a, a Gumpler kit, again, if you're, not sand, if you're not painting it, the white plastic is the best because it's you don't get stress marks. When you cut it off the sprue, you don't get the stress marks because the stress marks are white and the plastic's white. So getting rid of nubs on white plastic is a joy. So if you're building the unicorn and you're not painting it, it will always come out looking better than every other Gumpler because it's all white. Apart from other ones that are all white, obviously. So you get two of those. What's next? Next up is a little blue sprue. Just uh, the heel and the toe of the other foot. And also I found in the box the uh, tip of the uh, beam magnum. That came off the sprue. That's fine. Again, the nubs are so small, you might get a few parts that pop off. They're designed to come off easily. So again, yeah, look at the size of that. Next. Next up are the inner frame parts. Now, because it's a mega size, it's a bit like an HG, you don't really get an inner frame with this. You get bits of inner frame where they would actually be seen. So, um, for example, the elbows, the knees, the ankles, where you're gonna see the inner frame regardless. But where it's covered by armor, you, you don't get any. So it's really, really simple build. So we've got here, for example, we have, these go on the top of the legs where they go into the hips. This is the knee part of the knee joint. I think these may be part of the ankles. Or is that part, that's part of the knee, I think, where the psycho frame stuff goes on. Uh, we've got thruster bells. Very nice, they're all in one part, no seam lines. Awesome, sand those down quite nicely. Uh, and these are duplicated because the idea is, and I won't do it now, but if you notice these sprues, they're flat on one side. So the idea is, what you do is you'd snap this off here and you basically, would you do that on these? The idea is you spam them together like this on the sprue and then you pop them out. But we're going to obviously be doing things like fixing seam lines, so we're not going to do that. But if you're a young builder, that you could just pop it all together. I think it would work on that one as well, actually. I don't know. Let's, let's have a look. Would it work? Because this half's flat. That's like a Games Workshop sprue. It's flat on the bottom. If it were. Uh, spatial Awareness Fox. Which way around is it? I don't know if it would work. Would it work? I don't think it actually would. No, hang on. I'm talking rubbish. This isn't one of those sprues because they don't line up. Hooray! Well, you could line them up that way. Oh, in fact, yes. Hello. Simple kits, these. They, can, they, they never confuse me. You do it that way. So these two don't line up, but those two do, and you snap them together and you pop them out. But we're not going to do that. Do you know? I did this with the with the, with the RX 782 Mega Size. I kept saying it's a really simple kit. It's designed for kids. It's dead simple. Yeah, it tripped me up all over the place. There were loads of parts where it would trip me up and I'd get things wrong. What's next? Next up, we have more Psycho Frame, and it's still gorgeous. This is, I'm loving it. This is a duplicate of the other sprue, so you've seen that one. Uh, this is the third Psycho Frame sprue with the back plate for the backpack, 
and the chest, the torso. Uh, and there's no inner frame in the torso, it's just you put the psycho frame together and the armor goes around it. Uh, oh, it's just absolutely beautiful. That is, I would be reluctant to paint it just because it looks gorgeous. And apparently it also reacts under UV light. So if you can put, if you've got this in your display cabinet and you stick a UV light shining on it, the, um, the, the psycho, I keep forgetting the name of it, the psycho frame will glow with that kind of bluey, ultraviolet -y glow. UV light, as we call them in the UK, a black light, as they call them in the US. Uh, I don't have one, so I can't show you that. But yeah, that is gorgeous. I, I just don't want to do anything with that. As I say, I'll see what it's like on the model because there are some bits where it look different colours because of what's behind it. But we'll figure it out. Hey, what's next? Just some smaller sprues now. Uh, we have these two, which are joints, things like the shoulders. I think they're part of the arms I think and they look that looks very similar to one on the RX 78 too but they're parts of the arms I think you do also get two of these and you get two of these these are your little tools because it's designed to be used without using tools you get this it's a part separator and a part remover so this bit is for popping parts off the sprue and this bit is for separating parts you get two like in most mega size because it's usually a duplicated sprue but keep these anyway they're super handy they're great as spatulas or you can use them for separating parts strangely enough so i've got four of these now and i've got these two so yeah keep them i like the fact they put that in there it's even got a gumpler logo on it gumpra gumpra yeah what else have we got let's have a look of course we have polycaps and there's actually two of these these are the awesome mega size polycaps and you'll see when you look at them you might come out on camera inside many of them they're actually got little ratchet teeth because the idea is when it's when it's built, the arm probably wouldn't stay up where you put it. So there's little teeth inside the polycap so that it, it can snap into place. It has little detents. Uh, by all accounts, it's still a bit wibbly wobbly, a bit of brewer's droop going on, uh, but it works. So I think this is actually as well, not part of the Unicom. This is uh, copyright 2010. So these are standard polycap sprues for mega size. They tend to do that, so reuse the same thing. There's no point redesigning it. It's PC 500. This one was made in 2010 as well. So yeah, that's an old sprue, but that's what we'll be using. Two more sort of inner framey type parts. That's the base of the foot. That's the toe of the foot. Again, you get a feel for the size of this thing. Uh, that's the bit where the hand goes in. So it's the framework on the end of the collar, uh, various bits and bobs. That's the piece that goes down the side of the leg. Now, if you've built a master grade or a real grade or a high grade, uh, unicorn you'll recognize this bit this is the bit that goes on the inside of the shield consider the size and then make your judgment yeah that's a big chicken and that's a that's the shield interior gray part size of that it's just ugh. I don't know how much of this will be visible on the shield so how much you'll have hollow spaces it's not brilliant but we'll figure that out but that's quite big what's next okay next up is another white sprue that's the ass size that ass <sighs> that's massive back skirts in the middle bit uh, we have the pieces that go over the top here because there's thrusters underneath uh, we have the crotch where the man parts live and we have the upper thighs you can see there again this is where some psycho frame will slot in so what we're saying before about whether we paint silver behind the pink psycho frame parts Maybe I want to paint a colour in here like silver or a red or a yellow or something just to make it all uniform But I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. So that's that you can say you can see how, how big this butt is By the way, it's not the crotch. It's the chest <laughs> Yeah it's the, it's the... Next Now I'm saving one sprue to last the pièce de résistance, but let's go through the last few bits uh, We have beam saber parts these are, in fact, I think perfect grade parts. I don't read the Japanese, but these I think are, they're, they're dated 2000. I think these are actually perfect grade size beam sabers. Doesn't matter, it really doesn't matter. They look big anyway, it's fine. But they're perfect grade ones. We have a small sprue of the polycaps, polycaps. Now, if you built your bear guy, you'll recognize those, the little ball polycaps. These are dated, these are dated probably dated I can't see without my space helmet on let me put my space helmet on where's my space helmet space helmet these are dated 
made in Japan uh, I can't read the date anyway the, you if you've made a bear guy kit you've seen these before uh, it's a standard HG ball polycap sprue we have stickers for the eyes these might overblow the uh, white balance stickers uh, only a small number we have a silver square one for I'm not sure what I'll find out we have green reflective ones for the cameras so on the beam magnum and on the camera on the top of the head and the back and then you have a choice of eyes let me get a pointy stick have we got a pointy stick where's my pointy stick you have a choice of eyes uh, you can either have just the standard stick on ones where it's the black raccoon mask with the shiny green bits and I really like these because when I've compared, whenever, whenever I've tried to paint the eyes on a Gundam, the front camera eyes, they never quite look as good as if you just use the sticker. And to be honest, the sticker's fine. Get it on there. Get loads of gloss varnish all over it and underneath it, it'll be on there forever. You're fine. Nothing quite looks as good as the shiny green on those stickers. So I think we'll be using the sticker. I've seen this kit with painted eyes and it doesn't look quite as good. Or alternatively, you have a sticker here, which is just the black raccoon mask. Uh, you can pop out the eye holes in the middle. So if you want to paint the eye a colour, uh, but then say so you paint the, the the clear part for the head green, but then you want to just put the sticker over the top You don't have to mask off and paint the black bits. So I don't know what that square one's for. We'll figure that out uh, One important thing Given that these are simple builds, they're simpler than HG and they're designed for children You get water slides. Go figure. I don't know why. I mean, I'm not complaining. Don't get me wrong I love the fact you get water slides. You get water slides Like master grade you get stickers perfect grade the, the, the supreme most grown-up gumpler kits there are you get stickers these you get water slides and lots of water slides all little warning and caution symbols some um, some unicorn markings and decals so yeah they're gonna be awesome so thank you Bandai for putting water slides with your mega sizes when I did the uh, RX 78 the mega size if you haven't watched that by the way there's a playlist on the channel somewhere go to playlist and find it there's a mega size RX 78 2 uh, video build series check it out if you've never seen a mega size before when I did the uh, the mega size RX what I did was I used all the decals in the kicks it didn't have lots of warning decals it just had the generic big decals and I went through my collection of uh, 1 144th and 1 100 scale and 1 60th scale cast off decals from various complicates and put loads more little warning symbols all over it so I'll probably do the same with the unicorn I'll put all these on then if I think it needs some more I'll raid my decal stash now there's two sprues last to go so let me get those ready Okay, the second to last sprue is this one. Look at the size of that. That's the V-fin. Blimey. Now, I'm not that happy with the V-fin, I'll be honest. A, it's puke gold. Bandai's puke gold, which is just Ming, which seriously needs repainting. But the other problem with it is, it's yellow on both sides. That's the front. That's supposed to be gold. That's the back. That's supposed to be white. Or is that the... That's the back, that's supposed to be white. <laughs> get it right. That's the back, it's supposed to be white. That's the front, it's supposed to be gold. <sighs> so when we get this off, we'll have to paint this gold on the front, mask it off, and then paint the white on the back and hope we get a nice crisp line down the edge. Oh, come on, Bandai, you could have done better than that. You could have, I don't know. For the sake of one part, they could have plated it or something. I don't know, it wouldn't have cost them a massive amount to to yellow i mean we've seen multiple apart from them before in kits so or even just given us a sticker or something so yeah it's a bit lame that but then you get other parts for the head that's the side of the head you can see now the size of this thing you've got the, the actual face mask there uh these are the clear parts for the cameras and the eyes so yes you have got the option if you want i think that's for the eyes you can just pop that behind that sticker take the eye holes out and you'll have nice green glowy eyes or you can stick the whole sticker on the front. I say, I'm not lighting this. If you're lighting it, you could use the clear part, the black sticker with the holes for the eyes, and you'd be perfect. I'm not lighting it, so what I'll probably do is just stick the sticker over the eyes. I uh, don't know what that bit is. I think that's the internals for the, for the head. Yeah, because there's the Vulcans there. Top of the head. Uh, and I'm not sure. I think these parts for the shoulders. Yes. So anyway, last sprue coming up. Now this is the last sprue, and this is the one that shows you how big this is. Yeah, that's two, That's the shield. That bit goes there. <laughs> it's going to be huge. Look at the enormousness. That's the sides of the torso. Uh, there's the front skirts. That's the, sh the top of the neck where the head goes. 
the chest part, top of the chest. I think these are parts of the arms or the legs. Again, that's part, I think that's around the backpacks. So the backpack goes here. But that is the shield. Look at the size of it. Now, there's not a lot of detail on the exterior of the shield. There's a bit of panel lining there, but there isn't on any other grades anyway. Uh, the inside, yeah, there's some panel lining and some shapes, but it's a bit hollow and empty, but it's fine. Get some panel lining on here, and you've got the big grey bit that goes in the middle. It'll look fine. It'll look brilliant. So, uh, it's big. And don't forget the little wings stick out as well, because it's in destroy mode. So, you get a size for this thing. So that will do our look at what's in the box, kind of mystery box unpacking. Now, I don't know when I'm going to get around to building this. I will be doing a full build and paint and everything, and I'll be filming that as a video build. I might at some point snap it all together and do a live stream. Um, I might do, I don't know yet, but it's going to be a way off. I've got to finish the Master Chief and get that sold. I've got to finish the Eagle 3 models, uh, and then I probably need to do something else small before then. I've got to kind of do some small projects. This is going to be a big project, taking up my whole workbench again. And I need to do some smaller things. I've got that uh, pink Zaku I got from Chris and Paul. I need to do that because that's awesome. I need to get that done. So, but for those of you who are worried that I've gone off Gumpler, and like, when are you going to do Gumpler again? I, I will. I'm never going to stop doing Gumpler. Gumpler are awesome. It's just I'm not going to make Gumpler exclusively. I will make other things. Um, I have to make other things three models because they don't stop Gumpler. So you'll see me make other things as well. But I have interest in all areas. I might at some point make a tank or even, God forbid, a plane. So who knows? But Gunplay will always be in there. So this will get done at some point. I'm not sure when, but stay tuned. It's going to be great fun. It's also going to be a massive load of weathering. <laughs> oh, painting white is always the worst. And especially when the thing's like 45 centimetres tall. Lots of pre-shading. But yes, so far, just looking at the box, I can say it looks fantastic. Uh, the panel lining is super crisp. Apparently, on the box it says, they've not just put in flat panel lines like that shape, not like a square gouge. They're actually slightly angled like that, so that it, it kind of has a bit of shadow inside it. So it looks, if you don't paint it, it looks more like a proper panel line, which is really nice little touch. The fact they've engineered that is just insane. Uh, yeah, it remains to be seen how that affects actual pin washing, but we'll see. So I think when we do this, we're going to be obviously painting it. Well, will I paint it white or will I paint it different colour? I don't know. But whatever I do, I will do. I'm making this for someone else. This isn't mine. This is for someone else. So um, it's. I've been suggested that I do a bit of weathering, but not a lot. So it's not going to be factory fresh, but it's not going to be battered and beaten like the RX-78 too. So yes, we'll get around to doing that. So that's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, do stay tuned. I'll put this up on the playlist as the unboxing and so on, but I don't know when the first time will be, but stay tuned. I'll let you know. Uh, thanks ever so much for watching. Just a couple of announcements as always. Um, if you're not a member of the Model Makers Boom Hut on Facebook, address is here. Do go along. Uh, we are giving away a Bandai 172nd scale TIE Fighter kit. Uh, and all you need to do is go to the Boom Hut, this address, Become a member if you're not one already, and there's a sticky post at the top of the page. Click on that, go into it or read it, and add a comment to that sticky post. That's all you need to do. You need to be a member, but just stick a comment on that sticky post. Uh, the draw will be on the 16th of September 2017, so this Saturday coming up in about four or five days. So just go and do it. Take you two seconds, and you might win a sweet Bandai 172nd TIE Fighter. And last of all, uh, as I always say, uh, if you're not aware, I do um, have a Patreon account uh, where people can support me in whatever way they see fit, whatever amount they see fit, so that I can keep doing stuff like this. Um, I try and make as many videos as I can, and your support or my, the support of my patrons is absolutely invaluable in keeping me going month to month. So I can, you know, buy new kits for you to build for you guys. I can have the time to make these kind of videos, and I can also support myself. So support through Patreon is absolutely invaluable. It's completely voluntary. You don't have to do it, but if you'd like to, just offer something uh, to help me out go here uh, patreon.com forward slash model making guru but that's going to do it thank you so much for watching take care of yourselves if any of you have built this you know put a comment on the video or on the wherever i post this up on facebook or anywhere else let me know what you thought let me know how it went let me know any problems you had so i can have those in the back of my mind and then completely forget them when it comes to building it take care of yourselves until next time go do some, something awesome i'll start talking correctly today I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead like hyper and excited about this. So I'm more like giddy and talking rubbish. Go do something awesome. 
go be awesome and until next time adios amoebas oh it's a big chicken